We have seven o'clock. All right, seven o'clock it is. Uh, call the meeting to order. Um, first item would be some ground rules. Please silence your cell phones. Um, try not to talk over one another. If you have a comment, uh, any public comment, there will be time at the end of the presentation, at the end of the meeting as well. If you'd like to make public comment, uh, please hit the hand icon bottom of the screen there or email Greg and we'll relay it. Um, uh, participants just try not to talk over one another. Uh, it makes it makes it easier for the uh, minutes to transcribe. So all that being said, let me get a roll call. Planning Commission members, uh, Alex, you're here. Here. Tim. Here. Andy. Here. John. Here. And Tony. Present. Present. All right. Thanks, guys. Um, who do we have here with uh, TH Properties? Dean Rittenhouse, THP. Uh, Estelle Everhart, Eric Everhart and Mentis. Okay. Anyone else want to identify? <clears throat> All right. Here in none. Uh, first item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our April 12th meeting. Uh, does anyone have any comments or the minutes? If not, can we get a motion to approve? Yeah, this is John. In the um, discussion last month on the comprehensive plan initiatives, uh, we had a lot of discussion. Uh, the, but the main focus of the discussion that I was driving was for the initiative specifically related to rezoning of A and T Chevrolet. Um, and I said, we, we talked about a lot of different things, but at the end of the discussion, I specifically asked whether there was approval for that initiative directed towards the rezoning of a and Chevrolet. And there was agreement by the, uh, the members that were on the meeting, and I went back and watched the video. However, that's not reflected in the minutes. In the minutes, it, it reflects the discussion, including expanding the discussion to look at other other possible changes, but not that we agreed on the rezoning for A&T Chevrolet. So I'd like to ask if the other members agree that the minutes be amended to include that. Yeah, I mean, as this long as Alex, that's... I have... Oh, sorry, Chris, go ahead. What was that, Alex? I'm sorry. I, I was just saying, this is Alex. I have no objections. Yeah, as long as that's accurate, John, I have no objections to that. Okay. Yeah, I, this is Tim. I agree <clears throat> that that was our discussion and that was the consensus. Okay. Um, I don't know how we, do we vote to amend the minutes? I don't know yeah. that we've ever done this. Yeah, you would do a vote. All right. So I'm going to make a motion to uh, amend the minutes as per John's recommendation. This is Alex. I'll make that a motion. This is Tim. I'll second it. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right. So the next agenda item, let's see, triple net decided not to come. So we're going to TH Properties with Oakwood Terrace. One of you guys want to take the lead on this from THP? Does it, a representative from THP want to? Yes, Estelle, I think. Yeah, Estelle. sorry about that. I was muted. Hello, everyone. <laughs> this is Estelle Everhart, Eric Everhart, and Mentis. Um, uh, we're here tonight with Dean Rittenhouse from THP to uh, to uh, talk about final uh, recommendation and final approval for the uh, Oakwood Terrace on uh, Hidden Meadows Farm. In, Hidden Meadows. Hidden Meadows. Um, Sorry, I just lost my yeah. Hidden Meadows Drive in uh, below the Grandview Hospital. Um, we resubmitted the final plans in uh, in March after you guys looked at it in uh, February, I believe. We got preliminary approval. 
Uh, we revised the plans for the Township Engineer letter and we received the final review on March, sorry, May 5th. Um, so we have that letter to go over tonight. Um, you all have seen this plan before and for the most part, there's not a lot of changes from the February meeting. It is mostly just uh, cleaning up items, if I recall correct, Dean, you can interrupt if I can correct on that. No, so we have the 16.7 acre site where we have access on Hidden Meadow Drive here to the, and here I am pointing with my cursor, but uh, existing Hidden Meadow Drive on the southeast side, as well as the um, emergency access on the north part of the site. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the the zoning is uh, institutional service with the B ten H qualified for the seventy two units. Uh, they're all served by the internal streets that will be owned by the HOA. Uh, we have four stormwater management systems within the site, uh, and the, the development is accessed through two points on Hidden Meadows Drive, as well as the emergency access, as I noted, to the north. Uh, on this, uh, this is the record plan. You'll see the grade in area, the open space for the most part. There's about seven, seven and a half acres of open space, primarily wooded with a walking path throughout, and an additional emergency access to to uh, provide access to the cul de sac and then upper left down into the site and then back out either in Meadows Drive or the, the small uh, Macadam Drive on the north side of the site. Yeah. As I said, we get the uh, we have the May uh, fifth review letter, and for the most part, it's will comply. Uh, if you guys have any questions or want any items you want to discuss on it, we'll be, that's why we're here. Yeah, why don't we just run down the letter, and if it's a will comply, just say will comply. We don't have to dig in. Uh, if there's any anything that was changed from the previous uh, plan, we should probably have some discussion on that and move forward from there. That works for me. So the, the first item is discusses the zoning um, and it notes that uh, the HOA documentation is required consistent with uh, your township solicitor requirements that's pending. Uh, the street names are noted on the plan and that need a pre uh, sorry, approvals required by the servicing post office so we'll comply. So our planning commission members <laughs> Happy with the uh, with the names we're using. This John, I don't have any objection. Andy, okay. Tim, no, no problems. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, or at some point too. Although Durstein Drive would have been a nice, a nice one to put in there. <laughs> and I'd probably be liable for something. <laughs> uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. There's probably one around somewhere. Ah, uh, there's plenty. Yeah, <laughs> take your pick, right? Any township. There's none in my basement. <laughs> there you go. There is a couple Everhart's around too, but I'm not had gotten been able to get the sign. I gotta say. Uh, emergent item three is a will complies regarding the emergency access. Uh, hey, let, let me stop you there. What what kind of buffering did we end up using around the Weisel property then? Do you recall? Do you have the whole set here, uh, Greg? Or? No, I just have page one and three. Is it on but page it's, we, were, we were satisfied with it, correct? Yeah, we were having a discussion on it. Right. Yeah, I believe it was uh, like evergreens and trees. Yeah. Yeah, see. we definitely enhanced it and added the number, beefed up the number. Okay, good. Okay. Um, item four is the additions to emergency access lanes. Is this emergency access agreement was established for Hidden Meadows? Um, 
and it notes the um, the so the emergency access is using for hidden minnows is up hidden minnows drive through what I know is road A, but now it has a new road number. I'm sorry, the name. Um, if I can interrupt you here, Dean. I think in the in the response you indicated that you had our you've started discussions with hidden meadows about that easement. Is that correct? Is that moving forward? Yes, that is absolutely correct. We've had <clears throat> um, it's actually in their court here at this point. They wanted to do some modifications. And the the latest and greatest on that was probably the better part of three weeks back. We had conversation with them. They claimed it was in drafting yet at that point. So we're, we're waiting to hear back, but we've had the discussions. We've talked about it. They've been given all the plans. We've been in conversation with them for quite a few months already. Okay. All right, good. I just want to make sure that there was positive uh, movement on that. And just, and just to go backward on the last one, the, the landscape thing, um, I, I just look open up the plan here. Yeah, it's a heavy mix of everything: evergreens, canopy trees, shrubs. You know, more or less, effectively a, a staggered double row of things to fill in. So it's it's essentially the whole area between the property line and the walking path will be will be trees and landscaping Good. along that property. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, okay, uh, item five, it talks about the open space. We have 6.6 .6 acres of open space, and it needs to be owned and maintained in accordance with the, uh, with the regulations, which is will comply. Um, proposed recreation area is depicted on sheet one. It's um, below units 62 to 67 in the center of the, uh, of the open space two. Yeah, that that was sort of a, an open item, I guess, with the with the preliminary plan, um, as to what, you know, are they going to show specific improvements, or are we just going to escrow some lump of money? And then the question was, what should that amount of money be be based on? But at least on this plan, they've added, you know, they have the walking trails through the site, and they added a bocce ball court in that rear area. Um, so I guess that. The issue now is just are, are we still comfortable with them posting a lump of money for recreation facilities and let them uh, decide as a as an association or a developer as to to what they ultimately put in the back there? That was that was the thoughts at the last meeting, wasn't it? That's I mean, what we were I recall. In agreement that that's what yeah. we were, were expecting yeah. to do. But then we wanted something shown on the plan just to document that there was supposed to be something there. But ultimately, it'd be determined by the homeowner. And now they show the bocce ball. Form. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So now we can ask, we use that as an escrow quantity, I guess, and uh, uh, to get an idea on what gets set, set aside for future recreation facilities. So it sounds like everyone's still comfortable with that process that was laid out previously. Yes. So what is the process we're agreeing on? We're going to propose an escrow number and we'll, we'll agree to it or not. Yeah, that it won't be it won't be confined to where the bocce ball court is shown. That's sort of a placeholder if the HOA decides something else is is uh, is uh, more appropriate, then you will have some escrowed money to put towards it. Okay, sounds good. Uh, item seven notes no outdoor storage area for recreational vehicles is proposed, uh, and that the HOA documents must uh, note the same. That's will comply. Item eight is a disclosure statement for the each purchaser. That's a will comply. Uh, item nine is the uh, additional details on sheet one will comply for uh, unit dimensions and as well as 10 uh, the building spacing dimensions between uh, two blocks of units. 
Welcome, Kwai. Item 11 speaks to the uh, waivers that were granted at the preliminary approval and notes the uh, fee in lieu of the tree replacement to be determined by the township. And the last sentence deals with uh, quantifying the cost of that fee in lieu of. Yeah, I think at the preliminary plan, we didn't know the number of trees that were that was in. <clears throat> In question, so now now we know it, and that's will be the basis. Okay. Uh, item twelve adds some additional details on the mm -hmm. crosswalks. That's will comply. Item thirteen was the um, uh, striping and detailing on the farmers' lane that was um, reviewed by uh, McMahon and approved. Yeah, we're just looking for some clarifications up there on the, you know, on the plan. And then we have, which is, which is existing and proposed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think everything's sort of the same, same font, the same scale, so I was confused. Okay. I mean, I knew what it was supposed to be, but I don't know that somebody else would. Yeah, we'll make it more clear. Uh, item 14 speaks to the stormwater management facilities. Uh, notes, as I said, there's two underground, there's two underground basins. And there's two above ground basins. Um, item 14A um, relates to Grandview Hospital's discharge mm -hmm. going through this site, and now it will be rerouted around and through the property um, and abandonment and establishment of the new easement must be resolved. And Dean may be able to speak to that, but that my understanding is all that's underway as well. Yeah, um, that is. <clears throat> Sorry, go ahead. Uh, but we will at this point we're proposing a blanket easement for the to cover the uh, to cover that line as well okay. and Dean you were saying that is in, in process with the hospital yes it is the the attorneys have agreed on the language um, engineering wise Grandview had come back to us with some questions and or clarifications Estelle actually had gone through and responded to that. That went back over in their court. It's been in their court now for about the better part of a month where it's about ready or we're about ready to reach back out to them and find out where they're at to see if there's any questions. Bottom line is it's just literally down to a matter of the engineers dealing back and forth to get it to be satisfactory to, the, to Grandview. Okay, thanks. Uh, 14B speaks to um, the connection of the underground basins into Hidden Meadows Drive and the necessary agreement between the applicant and Hidden Meadows for connection into that storm sewer. And that too is underway as well, correct Dean? That is correct. <clears throat> that one's actually a little bit further along than the emergency access easement. We had sent the um, proposal over to Hidden Meadows. They had responded back with that. We had since responded back to them. So that one's actually moving along fairly well. Fourteen C's will comply with some additional details on the plan. And fourteen D is the standard O and M agreement for the uh, yeah um, on site stormwater management facilities. So I don't know what the status that been started at all, Dean. You still no that'll come that'll come from the township solicitor. Okay, you guys have a standard sort of. template you sort of start with. Okay. There's, a, there's standard things that go in it, but they're different for every development. Okay. But Mary will prepare that in the conjunction with any of the other township agreements that need to be done. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, item 15 speaks to the sanitary sewer connection and the O&M agreement between those, between with Salisbury Borough, and that is pending as well. I understand that the final planning module is also at Salisbury Borough. We're just waiting for their sign off before it'll come back to the township for sign off. Yeah, so that's all in process. Item 16 is it will comply uh, connection and agreements with North Penn Water Authority. 
17 speaks to the MPDS permanent approval from the Bucks County Conservation District that's pending. That was submitted uh, April 21st. And 18 is speaking to the standard uh, financial security agreements with uh, the applicant in West Rock Hill Township. That's a will comply. 19 is will comply as part of the final documentation of the legals. Legal descriptions will be forwarded to uh, Steve's office. Um, uh, yeah, the outbound monumentation is a will comply. And then there's a short list of engineering and drafting details reviews, which are all will comply. And that is it. All right. So you're looking for final tonight? That is correct, yes. So you just have a, a laundry list to take care of here. It seems like most of this is in process and should be resolved. Um, so how do planning commission members feel? I mean, give conditional final on this. Uh, Condition on getting all these items cleaned up, or do we have too many items to get cleaned up? This is John. I have a couple of questions, if I may. Yeah, absolutely. The in the lower left hand corner, uh, in that open space area, I assume the dark line is the walking trail. That is correct, yes. And we'd also discuss that that would be the emergency access egress path for that back cul de sac. Um, previously was no. where his where the air was now with Greg is that's the emergency access. Okay. Yeah, that was our original discussion is using that as as the emergency access, and then they, they added the, that other <clears throat> access to the uh, east side of the bulb there, southeast side of the bulb. You are correct. My my memory failed me on that one. Um, the, my other question is. These units are they going to be heated with gas or electric? Yes. Does UGI require any facilities to be constructed on this property to support that? According to UGI, they have gas in Hidden Meadows Drive, so they're uh, they're working on design. We forwarded the CAD over to them some time back. They asked for it. Uh, they've known about the job for a while and have agreed to supply. Okay. So as far as you know, they don't need to do anything on this property. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. That's all I had. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, this is Andy. I just had uh, one comment. Um, the emergency access behind uh, units 32 through 42, uh, I, I, I believe it says between 15 and 20, <clears throat> 15 and 20 feet wide. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So there was discussion last planning commission meeting about updating the ordinance to say to have it be a minimum of 16 feet. Um, I, I don't know how how the rest of the board feels about that. Yeah, you know, we, um, you know, is, is 16 to 20 feet better? You know, we or, or I I don't you know, but here it said 15 to 20 in last board meeting. We we recommended updating the ordinance to minimum of 16. Estelle, do you recall, was that 20 foot width at the request of the fire company because it's right behind the units and they thought they might set up a truck on the path? That is my dim run collection. I'll defer to Dean if he recalls. Yeah, yes, I, can, um, I, I can probably find the email that they wanted to be able to put the outriggers out on the path and wanted more space. Yeah, that's pretty typical. Steve, that is correct. <clears throat> that is what happened. And Bob had gone back to the fire marshal and had talked about limiting the area to that area just behind the units where they would set up and he came back and responded and said he was okay with that this is alex is that what that uh double line is on either side behind the units is that yeah they have it the like a shaded yes. area yeah where it's wider yes that's correct all right so in that in that light andy maybe it's you know again you know we could clarify it but if it's strictly just an access lane the 16 foot width is probably fine if it's near dwelling units 
where the fire company might set up on it and a wider width. We, we could probably craft some language to that. Would you guys have any problem just making that a 16 foot wide access road up until where it's 20 feet wide instead of 15? Um, we, we were, Bob's not here, Estelle. I don't know if you know, but I know we were, we were getting very, very tight on space, which is why we had gone back and addressed the uh, outlookers or the outriggers on the equipment so that we only had a comply directly behind those units themselves. I just don't remember exactly what the issues were. Steve, maybe you do. Um, no, but it sounds like you might have been running up into an impervious surface. Or Correct. Uh, that, that might be what it was. That's, yeah, yeah. That's probably what it is now that you speak of it. It's yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to put a chart. So the short answer is, I guess we would prefer to keep it 15 on this plan, which, since we have the 20 foot outrigger area in the area of importance. Yeah, you have 0.3% left <laughs> to give on the property. So uh, if you make any driveway bigger on this whole property, you know, during construction, you may have a problem. So that that's, that's what Bob Irick's concern would have been. All right. Well, we recommended preliminary conditional in February. There was just subsequent discussion in April that kind of changed that out a little bit. So, um, right. Um, right. And the fire marshal has approved the the fifteen foot. Correct, Steve. Yeah, they 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 showed the turning movements through there, and it works. Mm -hmm. It works with the fifteen foot the way they have it shown. Okay, but I have no further comment. Okay, any other discussion? All right, well, how does anybody feel about granting conditional final? Let's see, one more question. Do we have, do you feel that there's a, an, a larger than average number of uh, items outstanding on this one for conditional approval, or is this about what we normally have? Um, there's, there's probably a couple more than you normally have, but it's because there's a ton of agreements that go with this. Right. Between, yeah. between the agreements that the township would normally get, then we have the extra agreement with the hospital, the extra two agreements with uh, Hidden Meadows. Meadows, right. Okay. Um, so, no, it's not. You know factoring that in it's not out of the ordinary and 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 none of these agreements necessarily you know change the design of any, anything on the on the plan right. that, that's usually what i look for like is, is there something that's outstanding that could change change the layout or change the design okay. all right then i guess i would make a motion for conditional approval Conditional final approval? Final approval, yes. Sorry about that. No problem. We get a second? This is Andy. I will second. Okay. Any more discussion? Hearing none. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? This is John. I, I still oppose. The, even with the discussion that we had on relaxing the requirements for a number of units in the cul-de-sac, uh, this still not only exceeds the current regulation, but the revised proposed what we discussed. And I still feel for safety purposes that uh, I need to object. Okay. All right, well, motion carries with yes. one nay. All right, so there you have it. So get it cleaned up and take it to the supervisors, I guess. Yep. Thank you very I'm much. Fine. Thank you. You got it. Good luck. Thank you. Have a good evening. Good All right. I lost my agenda.
There it is. Um, <clears throat> so I guess we go into old business. Uh, we'll start with the uh, discussion Chris, on Paul sack length. Chris, can I interrupt a second? Sure. Um, I, I see in, in the list of names here that there may be one or two names of neighbors for the other projects. And I was thinking oh. maybe I give you a two second explanation of why the other projects canceled themselves yeah, <laughs> from the meeting, just so yeah. anybody that's interested in those projects would know. So triple triple net investments is a, a new warehouse different than Veris partners. And it's out on uh, Quarry road next, you know, between the PPL service center and, and uh, North American Drager or NAD, whatever they're calling it these days. Uh, that was only a sketch plan. Uh, and they withdrew themselves because they dis decided late that they should have a at least preliminary traffic study before they come uh, talk to the township. So uh, that that's our understanding of their reason why. Uh, Veris Partners, that's the warehouse that's on Climber and Meeting House Road. Um, they did do a major revision to their plan. Um, as you would, if anyone saw their email today, I did just just send out the re review on that. Uh, but part of their initial, our initial comments from the township's traffic consultant was that they should send their traffic study to PennDOT since we're dealing with state road and the traffic lights out there at Route 309. Uh, my understanding is they have sent it to PennDOT, but they did not receive comments from PennDOT yet. Uh, so they pulled themselves from the agenda waiting to see what initial response they get from PennDOT. Mr. Chairman, um, Tony here. There are some people in here that have comments about that. Could could we address the comments now, or do you want to do it at the end of the meeting? Uh, we could do that now. Okay. Thank you, and I'll let Greg handle that. Thank you. So, Greg, we have anyone email comments in? Uh, the only one that has emailed so far is Cliff Cole. I don't know if he wants to speak on uh, the warehouses or something else. Yes, I'd be happy to talk about the warehouse. Okay. Uh, um, I, I just want to point out, um, and this actually has been brought up by um, at least one member of the Planning Commission. Cliff, Cliff, and, I need your name and address. I'm sorry. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, I thought my um, infamy preceded myself. Um, you need it for I'm, everyone. I'm Cliff Cole. I live on shoe craft road 2440 shoe craft road and i also am part of a group called the citizens for clean air and we are in opposition to the adelphia gateway uh, compressor station in quaker town among other things um i would just like to point out that um one of the reasons we moved to west rock hill and there's this really wonderful article you know that's that is written in our township uh, quarterly newsletter um, about the uh, what the preservation the, what the conservation committee is doing and about um, how we've been you know since 1997 the Bucks County established an open space program and it's just a wonderful article in it and it even shows a map of of what the township has done and um, I, I just you know, I would just like to point out that I just don't see how these warehouses that the, um, the planning commission is is allowing people to come in and 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 giving variances to giving uh, variances and I'm sorry I might be using the wrong terminology easements <laughs> and and stuff like that. Um, I I just don't see how this fits the what this township West Rock Hill needs, and um, I would just like you to. You know, I, I'd like to hear a comment on this, but I would just like to to see this committee, you know, uphold the the, the zoning ordinances that we have in this township in place, and to try to prioritize this wonderful, um, you know, priority that we have in West Rock Hill Township for open space. I mean, I've made this same comment in relation to the compressor station. Um, I'm well aware that the commissioners are also against. The compressor station and there's litigation and and whatnot but it just doesn't fit in with what we're trying to do we you know we we are very different than richland township and um 
we don't have an issue. I mean, we don't have an issue with having to raise taxes and whatnot. That was brought up at the last township, at the last supervisor's meeting and, and whatnot. So I just don't see the driving need for these incredibly huge warehouses that really don't benefit the West Rock Hill residents. They're being set up to, to for populated area, you know, in greater Philadelphia and whatnot. So I, I would just really like to see the this commission, the planning commission just use their influence to- Two and a half minutes are up. Okay, can I finish my sentence, Mr. Chairman? Go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I would just like to see this committee, um, you know, uphold this this wonderful value that we have in this township, and just remember who who the residents are and and what we represent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have any other comments? It looks like Stephen Kratz raised his hand. Okay, Stephen, you want the floor? You have two and a half minutes. I need your Amy, name and address. Um, this is Amy and Steve Kratz, 3270 Meeting House Road. Um, I think that Cole and we have that same newsletter here in front of us. Um, we have both a question and also a comment. So I'll piggyback on what Cole just, or what Cliff just mentioned just now. Um, in Jay Kaiser, who's the chairman of the Board of Supervisors, in his chairman's letter, in this most recent edition of the newsletter, which would be spring 2022, um, in his last paragraph, he said these words, and I'm quoting Jay right now. He said, I think the keys for success lie in proper planning, moderate growth, and maintaining the rural characteristics of this township. And I thought it was interesting that those are the words that are coming from our supervisor, and they do seem to not quite match up with this idea of the Bears Partners um, proposed warehouse and also the idea that Triple Net was coming here today um, proposing a warehouse as well. Um, in addition, we have a question about the Bears Partners project. We know in the past they had been asked to submit a soil sample report, and we want to know if that has been provided to the township, um, and if so, what were the results? That I don't know. Greg, do, we, do you have any info on that? I do not recall seeing it. I don't know if Steve saw a copy. I, I don't recall getting it. I'm sorry. I'm jabbering away with my mic off. Uh, <laughs> we we had a, 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 phase, a, a phase two summary report. It did not include the actual soil sample data, uh, but it did indicate that they have cleaned up the items that they found on the property and it's been addressed. So the township does have a copy of that report with their submission. Okay. Anything else from the Kratzes? No, at this time, thank you. Thank you. you Anyone have, else? You have Pam West. Okay, Pam. Name Hi, um, Pamela West, uh, 2440 Shoecraft Road. In Quaker Town. Okay. Uh, I again, I'm concerned with the vision for West Rock Hill Township, and um, I'm particularly thinking of the um, the warehouses that are proposed, um, and what I hear at the you know as we're talking about the particulars of each warehouse um at the end of that when we open for citizens comment it's always what you hear from everyone is saying that they came to west rock hill township for the rural quiet and beautiful life that's here that's why we're here and that's why we stay and i'm just wondering if whatever the township really does need from these us uh, um industrial projects can we find another way to do that? I don't know that we need, I don't know how critical the financial gain is from it, but I'm just wondering if we can find another way to uh, develop our township because it seems quite consistent that the people want to keep, including myself, <laughs> would like to keep the rural nature of the township. Thank you. 
Thank you. Anyone else? Jackie Willard is next. Okay, Jackie. I'm here on behalf of my wife and I. Uh, my name is Jack Willard. I live at 2900 Climber Avenue, Telford, Pennsylvania. I have had, I've been blessed to have lived here for 62 years of my life. Um, I work in the construction industry and as such, I've made my living building projects like this. However, the reason that we live here is because it's a rural area. Um, we recognize that businesses come and go and they uh, provide services all well and good. But at nine o'clock at night, this area shuts down. No one is driving uh, large vehicles through here. Uh, if you if we go to uh, leave our house, we have a choice. We can either go out Meeting House Road or Quarry Road. If either one of these projects uh, gets to go ahead, uh, that's going to limit our access. Uh, not just mine, but everyone in this area. These are major thoroughfares to get to State Road, uh, to get to towns like uh, Telford, Sellersville. Um, in my lifetime, I've seen this area go from farmers' fields to uh, to businesses, and rightfully so. Otto Kastner owned uh, what is now uh, North American Dragger, um, and it's putting people to work. God bless them. Uh, but 24-7 activity, it does not belong in this area. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, Greg? Next is unknown. I don't know who that is, but okay. next. So, unknown, please identify yourself. You have to unmute your mic at the bottom. Sorry um, about that. Um, I sent you an email. Sorry. Um, I'm still having computer problems. Christine Shelley, 50 Wayland Road. Actually living in Richland Township. Why do I come to West Rock Hill? Well, I did used to live in West Rock Hill. My parents, my mom still resides um, on Lower Rocky Dale Road. And um, I, I live right on the border here. And West Rock Hill has such a wonderful um, citizens who care that want to come to these meetings and who have like minds and like voices. and. So I just want to say that I echo um, the the comments that have already been made and that I think we have something special here and that it's worth preserving and that um, we need to really be mindful and thoughtful how we do this development because we're not just, it, it's not just about our lifetime, it's about um, the people to come and that we really need to take care of this land, this good farmland and our precious water supply, which I think in years to come is going to become even more and more precious with um, with the way things are going in the world. So um, I just echo everything these warehouses, I just think are not. And, and, you know, I also think about what's going on with the environment we had a major fire out here last week. I'm sure you know about the trucks coming down these little tiny roads. You couldn't get two trucks across. People had to pull over and off the road so that the fire trucks could get through. And then where did they get the water from? The pond to put the fire out at the sawmill on um, Rich Hill Road. So, you know, I think these things all have to be taken into consideration and that it can't just be businesses coming in to make a buck at the expense of future generations. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, Greg? That's all I see. Okay. Well, we will move forward then. Um, so again, next on the agenda was old business. Uh, first item in old business was the uh, cul-de-sac and emergency 
<clears throat> emergency access discussion. Um, I, we had set up some standards last time. I, I don't remember what they were, and I don't know where we actually left it off. Anyone have a recollection of where we were, where we had left off? I thought we were done. Yeah, I thought we're so. Done. Not other than writing it up formally. And I have a uh, like an Excel sheet with single family home use, townhomes, and age restricted with cul de sac, cul de sac length, and number of units for each. And if I recall right, Steve, you had said that the townhomes could only be present if there was public water. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, they won't work in the rural, in the rural district. So I can share that with committee members and staff or however we want to do that. Well if you want, I can both. review them quickly too. What's that? I think share with both. Okay. But we had single family homes with on lot wells were 800 feet and 12 units for a cul-de-sac. With public water, it was 1,000 feet and 16 units. Townhomes don't happen with on lot wells. Public water and hydrants, we had 600 feet and 16 units. And age restricted with on lot wells was 600 feet and 12 units or public water and hydrants for 600 feet and 16 units. Okay. So this would, this would be inserted into the SALDO, correct? Yes. Now how do we go about doing that? um well i guess first we should look at are there any of the other comp plan issues that may also be an amendment to the saldo that we could do it all at one time right uh you know similar to the zoning you know rezoning of a and t uh well yeah rezoning is a little bit different right but yeah i mean i could i could prepare the, the draft that's more ordinance related and, and mary would have to do the, the final version um is this something a codific I codification done that'll be easier Greg. Right? right it's going to be done very soon so really yeah 10 years into making at yes least. yeah it's at least that long isn't it like five, five. Good, good things take time. Um, what was I going to say? And I forget. Uh, so with the with the comp plan initiatives. Oh, are, are, do we need to get uh, supervisor approval to have you write up a draft? Yeah, I I think you should make give them your recommendation and let them authorize right preparing an amendment to the ordinance okay um so again you want to wait until we have more things uh more items lined up before we go ahead and do that or should we go well i think it? we just need to look over the list and figure out if there is anything i'm, I'm not sure um If they're all zoning related, I think they might be more zoning issues now that I'm looking down through it. John, have you heard back from either Park and Rec or um, what was the other one? Conservation? Yeah, I, no, I haven't heard back from either one of them yet. Okay. I might want to prod them, keep this yes. thing moving. Okay. Steve needs more to do. <laughs> oh, I'm sure no, I don't. <laughs> Steve, I thought one of them was about making a trail committee. Would that be beyond the saldo? Would that just be the supervisors doing that, or would that be? Yeah, I don't think the making a committee wouldn't really be the saldo. Now, the committee might come up with suggestions to change the saldo, but gotcha.
No, yeah, this is really talks about the Greenway network and map, which is that's sort of separate from everything. We have this standalone sort of map that was adopted years ago as our sort of baseline for trail connections. Yeah, so I'm not really seeing anything else that's going to be directly a subdivision ordinance. So. Um, all right, so that being said, we want to make a, a motion to recommend that you draft uh, verbiage for the ordinance. I think you would still need to present to the supervisors first, right? Yeah, you'd make a recommendation uh, for the cul-de-sac to present to the Board of Supervisors. And then Chris would bring it up in the meeting, and then the Board of Supervisors would authorize it. Would they do it in my report or in the engineering? I would do it in your report. Okay. Yeah, it'll then, once we write it, then it'll end up in the engineering report. Oh, I got you. Right, right. Right. But I guess we'll need to put some kind of verbiage with it just so the supervisors understand what's going on with it, correct? Right. Yeah, and Chris does a really good job at the Board of Supervisors meeting of explaining just the basics of it, and then they'll authorize I do. it. You should do. <laughs> yeah, you do. I second that. Uh, I think if I think if you have like Alex's spreadsheet in the packet for the supervisors, that'll right. provide a good visual for them right. to see what what the current is and what the proposed is. Yeah. Yeah. So send one of those to me too. Yep. No yeah. problem. Send one to me too, so I can get it in their packet by Friday. <laughs> all righty. Um, all right. So, how's this recommendation want to be worded? We're, we're, we're voting now to recommend whatever we're recommending. Correct. This is John. I make a motion to recommend the changes to the cul-de-sac uh, dimensions as defined by Alex to be presented as a proposal to the supervisors in next week's meeting. Sounds good enough to me. Somebody second it. I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right. So <clears throat> we got that. That Well, that kind of covers uh, comprehensive plan initiatives as well, doesn't it? I'd like so to continue along a little bit more with that if we, if we okay yeah, yeah absolutely so i based on the discussion we had last month i took a look at the the bethlehem pike corridor for other possible changes and the area that was mentioned was the area between ridge road and the sellersville borough border because the rest of that north of there is is all PC or PI on both sides of Bethlehem Pike. So from Ridge Road down, there's a total of nine properties. Uh, the Comcast building is at the corner of Ridge Road and Bethlehem Pike, and that's zone commercial. The other eight properties are all suburban residential. And while I didn't go knocking door to door, as best I could tell, they're all residences, they're, they're homes. So I, I didn't see, and, and not only are they, they homes, they're suburban residential, they back up to other properties that are suburban residential and the neighboring properties in Selwardsville Borough are residential. So, so based on that, I didn't think it was, um, I'm, not, put this way, I'm not making the suggestion that we change that because those, properties even though that they are not zoned pc as the properties on the other side of bethlehem pike they are consistent with the other properties that are on the west side of bethlehem pike on the west side or the left side 
both. Yeah, it would be both. Yeah, now my point with that whole thing was just that it's consistent along Bethel and Pike on both sides. That was the and reason. I, right, I, and I, just, I understand that, but I said I looked at them, they're all residences, so I didn't. Yeah, I get it. I mean, everything's residences all the way up Old Bethel and Pike now, too, further up past Roy Ann, too. I'm just saying from a consistency standpoint along Bethel and Pike, make it both sides of PC. That was my point. And, and that, that's, I mean, that certainly is, is an alternative. I, I'd make one comment only because I was down in those properties today for some other problems we're having. Uh, they're fairly steep. Yes. Uh, after you get past the first house, it really drops off down the hill there. And I don't know that you could aggregate some of those properties to make them big enough to do a commercial development on because mm. you're, the way the slope goes down, it steps down yeah, to every one of those houses. It's definitely, it's definitely steep there. back there, yeah. Yeah. It's steep. Yeah, like I said, I was just saying from a consistency standpoint along Bethlehem Pike on the corridor, though, that was that was the whole point of that. And, and I understand that, but it, uh, I guess my, my pushback question to that is, are we then taking it upon ourselves to proactively change zoning on individual property owners? I don't know if that affects their taxes or or anything else by having them zoned differently. Yeah, I'm not sure on that one either. That's a good question for Greg or Steve. They don't get zoned differently, but in the PC2 district, most of the times when you rezone something commercial, it, they become non-conforming. But we have a caveat in our uh, zoning for PC2 that Single family dwellings, residential units are still conforming and they won't have to go to the zoning hearing board. So for any variances based off of use. So is, is that SR right now down there? Yes. Okay. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I had no dog in a hunt one way or the other. I just thought I was being, making it consistent up and down Beth on Pike, that's all. Right. So is, is Ridge Road, Ridge Road, the northern boundary of the of the SR there? Yes. I don't have my map in front of me. I'm sorry. Yes, generally, except for the police station, the you know PRA and the and Comcast, right at the corner there. It's but there is SR, SR north of Ridge Road. Not just not on Bethlehem Pike. Off. Of no, I'm, I meant on Bethlehem Pike. Which yeah, not Bethlehem. on Bethlehem Pike. Right. It's right. the northern boundary. Yeah. There's there's only eight properties north of the <laughs> Sellersville Borough that are SR. The most of them are small lots. They're all right next to each other in that stretch between the borough line and, and up to Ridge Road. Hmm. Yeah. And that wasn't. Was was this something that you had had come up with, Tim, or was this something that was in the in the comp plan recommendation? No, I was just looking at the <clears throat> zoning up and down Bethlehem Pike, and <laughs> both sides, it's all PC in that one section. Well, other than the AT, you know, the AT uh, lot as well, and I just was looking at it and saw that that section. I wonder why that little section is. I mean, I know it's steep slopes and it's residential right now, but I mean, the whole both sides currently are that way. So I just thought from a consistency standpoint, it would make right. sense. But again, it's not anything crazy. It was just something to look at. Right. While we're on the topic of changing things, um, wasn't there a lot that was zoned PC at the corner of the catch basin and forest? Greg, is that the one where we had a lot of people asking about it? Yes. Yeah, it goes and all that, the way back a couple lots deep there from like Old Bethel and back Forest Road. It goes all the way to Mill. Yeah, it's Forest and Mill, that intersect yeah. that corner there. And, and that one, not to cut you off, but that one would be covered by action item number 12, which says to possibly permit single family residences in the PC2 district. Hmm. I mean, so to tie those two together, I mean, if we went ahead with based on number 12, where we're, we recommend to permit 
residential dwellings within the PC2 district, then if you change those eight lots on the west side of Bethlehem Pike from SR to PC2, then the fact that there are residential houses there would still be a conforming use. And they could build another home there if they wanted to. Yeah, that property. In a way that defeats the purpose of zoning a commercial. If it ends up getting, if you make, like right now, as Greg said, we have a caveat that says any existing residence in the PC2 is considered a conforming use and you don't have to go through any of the rigmarole with the zoning hearing board if you're putting an addition on or doing something to your existing house. But if you zoned it plan commercial, and then allow the vacant properties to all be built with residences, it eliminates the intent for the being plain commercial in the in the first place. Yeah. And the other reason that we have out there in the plain commercial too is that there's some well problems out there with um, the wells being contaminated with PFSs. So that's an issue in that area for residential homes. Was was that recommendation in the in the comp plan? Was that for properties off of, not including uh, Bethlehem Pike, or was that for the whole? whole uh, I'll, I'll read. You know, I'll read the whole item. It, it says reevaluate the borders of the Plain Commercial Two District to better accommodate and attract commercial uses and permit single-family residential use uses where appropriate. Hmm. Yeah, and I think I I think you're right. I think that all kind of stemmed from that corner property there. Yes. Huh. So that was actually the next one I wanted to tackle. See, and, and but up there in that corner, we already have a commercial development proposed on Old Mill Road. You know the next property in from that corner yeah right so and and i got like that's been moving forward on hold moving forward on hold and not too far in the past i got another call or email saying hey we're revising that plan again they want to move they want to move forward again so uh, is that the montgomery partners yeah okay. yeah hmm. so, so there will be another commercial property you know dropped right in the middle of those other properties right. that we're talking about right now. Hmm. I think if the caveat's already there about the non-conforming use with the single family homes and the PC, then there wouldn't necessarily be a reason to then permit, other than for new construction, obviously, but right. I don't know that we have a whole lot of <clears throat> areas where people are proposing new construction of single family homes in the PC area, are we? Or do we? Not that I'm aware of. Well, I think that that okay. corner lot there is, is, I think it's been looked at a couple of times for a potential residential development. And when they find out it's zone commercial that they can't put a house there, then that interest drops off. But that's the only property I'm aware of where there's been that discussion. Right. John, was there a number 12 in the recommendations that said something about allowing residential homes in PC2? Yeah, I said it, it says reevaluate the borders of the Plain commercial, commercial 2 District to better accommodate and track commercial uses and permit single family resident uses where appropriate. Okay, so that would be different from what we have now where an existing home could stay there. What this would be saying is allow single family homes in the PC2 where appropriate. Yes. And I see how that would contradict, you know, the intent of having a PC2 area like Steve was talking about. And not only that, but you'll have people up against Wilcox, residential homes near Wilcox's near the tire factory where those high intensity uses are and they don't always mix well together 
And that ties back to you know the comments that folks made before about the warehouses is you know industrial use and residential use usually don't coexist very well together for people looking for a rural environment and you know if if we allow that mixture um you know it it's it just i think it's it's bound to create more heartache down the road where you know, if somebody's living next to Will, builds a house next to Wilcox and suddenly realizes that at, you know, six o'clock in the morning they're starting operation and smashing metal together, and they complain and it's like, well, you know, didn't you know that ahead of time? Well, that's not why I moved here. So, you know, I, that item is again one that um, there's going to be a lot of different angles that we're going to have to consider what the best solution is. And I, I think that opens up another one of those gray areas is, you know, when is it appropriate to have a single family house house in a planned commercial area? Right. Right. I would tend to agree <clears throat> that we wouldn't want to add that back in for some reason. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I don't have my ordinance open here. And the only residential use that sometimes you do see in like a PC2 is, is sort of that mixed use residential where it's, you know, maybe commercial on the first floor and they put apartments over it or something like town center down at the you know in dublin what they're doing there with the couple commercial uses and then some townhouses behind it but that's you know more what you have envisioned i think in the village area in the village yes exactly. not over in the pc area right is <laughs> A residence with uh, a business. I mean, my situation. You know, I have my residence and my business here in the, in the PC, but it wasn't PC when I started. Um, is there is there an allowance for for that type of use in the PC too? Or PC. I'm looking. There's at not a major like a home occupations allowed, but a home occupations for like an accountant or, or those types of things. I know there's a square foot allowance. Yeah, home. there's a square foot allowance too. And I forget I brought it up. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just thinking like Fedegari had that house they bought behind them and they wanted to use it to put up um, visiting dignitaries or whatever. Right. Well, Was, how did we end up? We do have a. On? We do have a dwelling in combination with a business permitted use in the PC2. That's what I thought. I don't know all the parameters to it, but for some What's version the of it, it is like the line line works. Well, sorry, line works is kind of the same thing, but figure um Fetigari bought a house that was behind him. And I think we part of that we used is emergency access or another point of egress. For them yeah. but they they were saying they wanted to keep the house and use it to basically put up uh people visiting from their their headquarters yeah so it wasn't really a a separate full-time residence and they actually knocked that house down and we're going to build a new one but haven't built a new one yet huh. i thought th i guess they wanted a nicer house than what than what they got gotcha. well, they didn't need one with COVID anyway Right. Yeah, nobody was going anywhere. Hmm. Well, I think number 12 might have been a stretch. Um, well, you know, we were working with Bucks County on this. I'm surprised. Well, I, I think part of it might have been, you know, the in some areas it gets pretty big the, the pc2 area you know because we went all the way back to old mill road right uh but it was a nice boundary um you know if you just look at it as the general comment of should we have included all that area or is there a couple lots that might be not necessarily allow residents but be turned back to the rc or the or the ra district but like, nothing's jumping out at me that to be turned yeah, I know it's, it's really all hinging on that corner a lot. I think that's why we started the discussion during the comp plan discussions. And yeah, that's what I recall too. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that whole distance from Old Bethlehem on Forest Road to Mill Road up on that end of it is, I mean, that's what five or six lots back off, right? So that be so. Whereas it was, I thought the concept or you know conceptually, you're talking about the first two lots off Old Bethlehem becoming PC two up there. It's you know the first six lots or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. The ones that front Forest Road are smaller lots, and there's a row of. You're right. There's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six lots. Once right. you get behind those lots, you know, as you're going. Yeah, they're bigger properties. Out, yeah. Then they're big properties that that right. span practically from Bethlehem Pike back to Old Mill Road. Right. Yeah, I think it's just that that spot there on Forest Road where the <clears throat> you know those residences are currently. No. So do we want to uh, just pass on that one? I think we've evaluated and determined we don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well put. Okay. That, that 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 makes it easier for me. That makes it easy for everybody. You got anything else, John? Uh, the only thing I wanted to just mention is to, and this goes back to a comment that Tim made last week, as well as folks made earlier in this meeting, is that we've seen a lot of increased requests for building in the the RC area. There's, um, you know, here here on Ridge Valley Road, there's the Kratz property. It was the select properties properties. Um, we've seen the Green Top Road project come through, and what didn't I, I thought of this before and then forgot about it and thought about it again in the last couple of weeks is, and there must have been a reason why it was done this way. But if you build in suburban residential or um, most of the other areas, you're required to set aside ground for open space. But for some reason, if you build in the RC area, which has residential conservation, there's no conservation requirement. You don't have to set aside any ground for open space. It, it just it to me that that's a contradiction and i think that adds to some of the you know the inappropriate to steal tim's term the inappropriate developments that we've seen come through where you're putting these little micro developments in the conservation area where you're allowed to use 100 percent of the ground for development and set aside no ground for conservation within the conservation area so uh, that's that a good point, fun. John. We, we may want to. I, I I don't know. You know, the, those who came before us may have had a reason for doing it that way, but well, not, not to that, me, it just seems a contradiction. Not to dive into the zoning theory too deep, but I, it's basically based on lot size. The, the the SR district allows the open space developments have small lots, so it's. So we've got to think of it like a cluster development where you're allowed to have smaller lots if you have a chunk of open space and in the RARC districts you know you're not doing those small lots because you have on lot sewer and water so you have to have the larger lot anyway uh you know that that's sort of the long and short of why you know developments that have an open space requirement are generally small lot cluster type developments and when you have full size acre two acre lots uh, you don't have that open space standard in general. And there is some case law about not making ridiculously large lot size requirements in, in zoning districts. So you can't rezone the RC district and say it has to be 10 acre lots. But could you rezone the RC district saying that you had to have 25% open space set aside? You'd have to, we'd have to have that more of a discussion with the solicitor. To, um, when you already have, like I said, when you already have large lots, it's typically not then open space too. Usually giving up something, you're giving up a smaller lot. Uh, now, if it was 1.8 acre lots and you could go to a one acre lot, 
um, and then have some open space. That's you know that may be something we do have a conservation a conservation plan that's uh, somewhere in our ordinance which has that idea in the in the more rural areas. But sometimes it's hard to do a cluster because you have to do the lots wherever you can find the the perks. Uh -huh. You can't necessarily cluster them in one corner of the development and then have the rest of the acreage uh, open. <clears throat> but in the, in the cases that we've seen, you know, if if the Kratz property went from a six lot subdivision to a five lot subdivision with a one lot open space set aside, and the the select properties went from four houses around a circle to three houses and acreage set aside, the Green Top Road went down by one or two houses with open space set aside. You know, there we're helping to preserve this rural environment that so many of us treasure and and not just, you know, divvying up the township into 1.8 acre chunks until there's nothing left for conservation. The only, they get to the point where the only conservation area would be in the non-conservation district because the rest of it had been all developed. Right. <clears throat> I agree. And that, that 1.8 acre, Steve, I mean, that's like, obviously precedence. I mean, in, yeah, in some fashion, there's some old or not too old case law that essentially boiled down to a 1.8 acre lot was a defensible large lot size. Uh, and that's, it sort of got adopted then, especially in Southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, that's why I say beyond that, you know, we need to have a, more of a discussion with the solicitor to, to know what she was comfortable deviating from that kind of standard. And that 1.8 gives you a certain density on the on the property. And if you artificial lower that density, you know, someone has the ability to argue that you effectively created a three acre lot or a five acre lot because you say it's a 1.8 acre lot, but if you, but if you say I could only do, you know one house per five acres, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a 1.8 acre lot, you can't, you can't use the entire property. Yeah, the, a lot of times the lot size, it's very kind of situational. So it's kind of like, if you're going down Kelly Drive, which is speed limit 35, and you're doing 55 at rush hour, nobody's going to pull you over and give you a ticket. So it's like, okay, how, how much height, you know, how much above that okay maybe the standards too how much above it can you get it depends on are you in lancaster are you you know do you have a reg residential agricultural where you're trying to set aside big blocks of agricultural area residential con uh, conservation where you try to set you know collect blocks of watershed and headwaters areas to conserve but for a lot of the areas the septic will be the limiting factor and 30 years ago the five lots across from us were supposed to be 175 units and they went and got the perk test like yeah we're putting in five ten acre lots because that's all that they could get same thing with uh, when telford borough bought the tower and ingrams they thought they were going to get a lot more and then they got the perk test like you're doing you're doing spray irrigation you're not doing one acre lots you have to do on-site sewer and you're kind of limited by the soil and by your ability to get you know, private water, private sewer well and septic or well sand down or well and uh, spray irrigation. Hey, Hal, could you give your uh, name and address, please? Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> 1040 Ridge Road, right? Well, <laughs> no, 1805 Ridge Road. <laughs> Thank you. Al Sherman. <coughs> Tim, I was just going to say, I know in the, the past there have been municipalities that were trying two and a half and three acre lots, and I think that's where they started getting shot down by some of that case law Steve was referring to. So, the one I, other I big... it... Good. All right, Alex. I was going to say the one other big picture item, which 
was thoroughly discussed at the time of the comp plan because every time Bucks County does a comp plan, they, they always talk about this. It's that you know fair share of housing. So you have to have you know the ability to have different different areas, but they calculate how many units you could fit in the township as a whole to see if that's appropriate with the general conditions in the area. So in addition to you know the specific uh lot size precedent that might be out there there is a couple other factors that you have to figure in that if you artificially make uh things too large in one area you might be forced to keep the balance of the number of units that could go in in an area to have to increase your higher density areas to to get those fair share numbers in the range that they're supposed to be in so it is a complicated balance I'm not saying that it can't be looked into again. I'm just saying there's there's several things in play, not just lot size or preserving property. Yeah, understood. It just, you know, with the soils the way they are in West Rock Hill and, you know, what we deal with, especially in the upper end of the township here, it just, uh, like I said, it just seems there's an exorbitant, exorbitant amount of, uh, you know, these, like John said, these developments coming in in areas where really, you know, they probably shouldn't be. I understand. Right. And that's why I mean, I, I don't know that we would win that battle, but if we're, if we're able to influence things so that there is some requirement to set aside areas to be conserved within the conservation area, when developers come through, at least that's a step towards helping to preserve more of the ground. Yeah, well, I just keep, you know, the, the Kratz development here is just a perfect example. I mean, these lots can't, the way the soils are here in this township, the lots can't handle the runoff from the impervious surface created on a 1.8 acre lot. So we get these small little retention basins that are, you know, right in people's front lawns and <clears throat> beside houses that just, you know, are, they, I don't know. Personally, I don't like. I, I, I mean, I, they, I agree with you. I, I, you know I mean, like, so they can't. The soils can't take the runoff that we create by the impervious surface on a one point eight acre lot. So why can't we say? And I know why we can't say. It, I get it. But like, hey, West Rock Hill isn't Lancaster when it comes to soils and you know uh, runoff and all that type of thing. We we've got clay. We've got you know we got boulders. We got you know what I mean. Like it just can't handle it. So. Okay, 1.8 acre lot, but now we've got now we're forced to put in these little BMPs that become mosquito traps and you know ponds in people's front lawns because we can't make the lot size bigger to accommodate the runoff that's created with what you're allowed from an impervious surface standpoint on that property. That's my point. Yep. Uh, and I agree with you. I agree. That's why I was saying if we're not gonna win that battle, yeah, there's gotta be a battle we can win. You know, is there I mean, is an acceptable alternative to be let's not have as many lots? Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, it just seems that, you know, okay, yeah, okay, precedent law, blah, 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 but every area is different, right? I mean, West Rock Hill does not have good soil, you know? I mean, any way you slice it, especially on the upper end of the township. So, you know, like I said, we're forced to have these things that they can't handle the runoff, and and, and you're, you get these situations where it's just, like I said, you know, I don't know what a better word is, but inappropriate. I mean, they're just inappropriate. And again, it's yeah, the one is right <clears throat> near me and it's obviously very, you know, it, it's something I see all the time. But I mean, if you think about it, all these other ones are the same way, too. You know, be it the select property now, I mean, the select property one now is in, you know, the village uh, area now. So that, that falls within what the, you know, density requirements would be. But, you know, Green Top Road does not And I mean, there's there's going to be a bunch more coming in, I'm sure. You know, with the way the housing is well. Might subside here for a little while now, but the way the housing situation is, I mean, it's going to be there's going to be more and more of these things coming in. <clears throat> yeah, well, you're you're limited by the soil that you have on the site, and if you're in the boulders, it takes ten thousand years to make four or five inches of soil. If you're down on the red shale, it weathers away a heck of a lot quicker. You know, it's, if you've see, ever seen anybody paves a driveway with red shale? It's a, it falls apart in two three years if they pave it with the uh, salt and pepper diabase from the old rock hill quarry that stays perfect for 
75, 80 years. Uh, the rock weathers at different rates, and depending on what you got, if you don't have soil, then you just are trying to put a septic system down on you know bedrock. It ain't gonna work. <clears throat> Steve, right, I'm, well, just, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask, ahead. just ask the question: um, Is there any way to try and uh, control lot size based on stormwater? I mean, I know DEP has all their best management practices, and they're all big on infiltrating, which is causing all these little mini basins, but. I'm just trying to think if there's something that the township could do to try and address the the need for in, whether it's infiltrating stormwater or whatever to try and you know um, make sure that the development that's going on a lot is capable of dealing dealing with the stormwater on that lot or getting rid of the stormwater on that lot. I guess. Yeah, I don't. I'm not familiar with anywhere that has sort of pegged their lot sizes to the stormwater aspect. Maybe I, I'd have to look into that. Well, yeah, Philly, which just which has been implementing a stormwater tax for for retrofits, and usually the uh, poster child is the Morris Arboretum, where their entire driveway and parking lot is done with permeable pavement. And then they have essentially rip wrap in gabions underneath as well. If you got to put a parking lot in, we're going to just store the water under the parking lot. But you do have to go through and get the leaf blowers to make sure you don't clog up the pores so it does actually drain. That's a bit beyond your average homeowner, but if you got a HOA, possibly. <clears throat> Or lots of rain barrels. All right. Um, so, I mean, are we do we want to keep having this discussion, or is it something we want to look into? <clears throat> I, I personally, I think there, there's so many outstanding factors, that, like Steve has explained, um, that trying to make a change we're going to be hitting some walls. I certainly understand uh, Tim and John's viewpoint. Uh, but I, again, I think it's going to be a it's going to be a tough road to hoe. Would making the requirement to have open space set aside in the RC district be that impossible to implement? Well, I, I mean, I would defer to Steve on that. I'm, I'm deferring to Mary on that. There you go. Uh, yeah, well, it's, pretty, it's not impossible to implement. It might be impossible to defend. To defend. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Is there something the we can say to Mary? Okay, like to get, have a discussion with Mary if there's any way. I mean, explain, you know, what the thought process is about what our concerns are and just say, you know, is there anything like John said with your or Alex said with regard to the stormwater, you know, uh, practices or anything like that that we have the ability to, to limit this? Yeah, there's some other creative overlay zones that some towns have used that identify certain natural features and they don't change the underlying zoning, but they add regulations where there's certain natural features that been done they, they could be problematic too but it's, it's certainly something we would have to discuss with the solicitor before we were able to give you a better direction well maybe we can do that and maybe get some better direction and see if there's anything we can do yeah, probably the probably the biggest one is in german town is a uh, chestnut hill and manning up the wissican watershed overlay for city of philadelphia zoning ordinance it's up there, you know, text searchable amlegal.com is one of, you know, it's one of the biggest locations to have all of or several Pennsylvania municipalities all have their zoning ordinances up there. And one of the things you can do is like, okay, well, I'm going to search through and find you know, 20 different versions of 
stormwater basin regulations. And okay, here they are. So uh, amlegal.com, that's the big library of online zoning codes, but Wissigan watershed overlay, probably the closest because it's the Wissigan schist, fairly thin soils, poor infiltration, and a lot of dense lots. And that has stood up to a couple of challenges over the years. You know, steep slopes, infiltration, and how much of the uh, green space or open area you're allowed to clear. <clears throat> Good. So, Steve, do you want to talk to Mary about this? These things. <coughs> I'd love to. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Greg and I could have a could have a conference call to at least uh, tell her what what we've been talking about and what may or may not be possible. Right. If that's okay with Greg, I don't want to speak for the manager. He's fine with it. I'm fine with it. <laughs> You yeah. sounded more sincere than Steve did. <laughs> he did. He's had more practice. <clears throat> we'll send you a bag of charcoal, a couple of steaks. You can sit out of the pavilion and discuss it over a barbecue. <laughs> the issue now is getting our three schedules together. That works. That's the, the next hard part. All right. Um, moving forward, Johnny, do you have any other uh, comp plan? conversation not for tonight thank you all right anyone else what if i'll mention the one that on that i think thursday is bucks county is doing their uh public transit discussion i think i'll i'll be listening in i think greg might be listening in but they are working on it at least <clears throat> i'm trying to link up upper bucks county with public transit and figuring okay micro transit like uber or vans to try to get people to and from Grandview Hospital, both for employers or not. But most of them are focusing on the boroughs, not necessarily on us. But they're at least working on it. OK, thank you. I looked at SEPTA's long range plan. At one point in time, they at least toyed with the idea of extending um, the old Quakertown line up to West Rock Hill Township. To a station on State Road, that seems like it's fallen off of their long-range plan. Ah, uh, yeah, they've been they've been looking at that for years, and it's always frustrating because I do a fair amount of work in Philly, and it's always frustrating to come into Lansdale, get on the new train into Lansdale, and then there's the freight train sitting on the other siding, about to head up to. Telford and Fresco, and then up to the big freezer company up in Quaker Town. And they're saying, well, we couldn't possibly provide service. Like, you've got a train running there today. I mean, like, if I could hop on the freight train, I could be back up here in no time. But it's a question of updating everything. And they don't really want to have the updated service to re electrify everything. So it's a lot easier to just run a bus. Yes. Because the route, the uh, old, the route 132, which replaced the 96, which was the old Lady Bell trolley line that they finally cut off, uh, that now runs from Landis's and then essentially goes down to, used to go down to Norristown, but followed the old Liberty Bell trolley line route. But you still can get to Norristown, but unfortunately, they don't really uh, head up too much further north. But uh, now with Uber, a lot of people are finding that, okay, I can just show up and catch a bus or I can travel around inside of here. But yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea to try to connect you know, the new CHOP facility on Line Road in Franconia. And you know, Grandview Hospital is trying to get some of that stuff figured out. All right. Um... We want a new business. <clears throat> I have no new business. Uh, does anyone else? This is Alex. I have none. John, I have none. Andy, Steve, no. I'm sorry. Um, 
Did we settle the Butter Creek Builders uh, extension? Yeah, Tim. Tim, after I wrote this, Tim got me another six month extension. So okay. he didn't say yeah. what he was going to do. He just gave me another extension. Excellent. Whatever. That's the only thing that that needed any attention. Yep. Okay. All right. Um. So no new business. Um. I'll open up the public comment. Greg, has, has anyone emailed? Cliff Cole raised his hand. Cliff Cole, you got two and a half minutes. Thank you very much. Um, you can hardly see me because I'm out in the dark. Um, thank you very much for having this discussion. I very much appreciate it. Um, this uh, committee, this commission, um, at least listens to public comment and um, acts on it. Um, I haven't felt that way always at the supervisors meeting. So I very much appreciate you guys actually listening and um, talking about this. And I cheer you on to um, bring this up with Mary and um, and whatnot. I'd be happy to be a witness for the uh, defense, if you will. Um, one thing I would like to mention, um, Christine um, had in her comment had talked about this fire. Um, and you might say, well, why is the fire an issue for the planning commission? But you guys just in you, in this meeting, you just gave a variance um, for a fire emergency uh, uh, code. Um, now you did cite that you talked to the fire marshal about that, but um, I would just like to point out that this fire was actually dispatched. The dispatch was actually to the address of the compressor station. 2950 Rich Hill Road was actually what it was called. That ended up being erroneous, but um, the facts are that the emergency responders were very concerned about a fire right next to the compressor station um, and whatnot. And um, again, I just ask you uh, commissioners, just make sure that you don't give variances for emergency uh, you know, access. There's obviously extremely inadequate emergency access in the area around where the fire was, which was right next to the compressor. Uh, they actually had to bring a helicopter in to uh, douse, the, douse the flames. Um, also, I have one more request of the Planning Commission is that if there is going to be a, uh, a nice column, the Conservation Committee, is it really too much to ask for the Planning Commission to actually publish a, at least a small column in the um, in the township um, newsletter, just explaining what projects are being uh, are on the table and what actually has been recommended for approval. Um, so, anyways, just an idea. It would be helpful because not everybody can attend these meetings um, and uh, has the two and a half minutes are up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, Greg? Jackie Willard. Hello, folks. Once again, Jack Willard, 2900 Climber Avenue, Telford, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned before, I've lived my whole life in this township, and I grew up a country boy. And we always laughed at people who uh, built a house next to the farm and then complained about the smell of fertilizer. Um, much the same uh, was brought up earlier about uh, building houses next to Wilcox. Um, that's not what's going on here as far as I'm concerned with the uh, warehouses. Yes, we're uh, playing uh, industrial, uh, zoned industrial commercial. Uh, however, uh, with these warehouses, we're talking about a scope larger than anybody had foreseen. Uh, I live right next door to a business, and the, the, the man's a gentleman. He operates his, uh, operated his business as, uh, in, with concern for his, his neighbors. Um, I'm just concerned as to what will happen to this whole area if this is allowed to go through. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else, Greg? Unknown has raised their hand. Okay, unknown. That's that's me. Sorry. Um, just to piggyback on the warehouse conversation. I need your um, I need your name and address, please. 
Sorry, Christine Shelley Wayland Road. Um, no there's a huge warehouse that they built down uh, down the line in Colmar, right off of uh, 309, and it doesn't look like it's occupied. Let them go rent space down there. Maybe we should just suggest that. Just an idea. It's been built, was built on farmland, and it's not being used. So just an idea. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I don't see anyone else. Okay. Seeing no one else in public comment, I would look for a motion to adjourn. I'll make said motion. And I will second it. This is John. Oh, John. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Have a good night. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. Thanks.